Hey, hey, you all. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Y'all already know what it is. You see the title of this video. This is Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, darling. Season 11, episode four. Let's go ahead and get into it. So normally, I would say we pick up where we left off, but we did not. Bravo left us with a cliffhanger. So it's the next morning and all the girls are getting ready. You all, Lisa Rinna's lips look painful. And all I can think about is how many black women who had very full pillowy lips were teased. We were called monkeys. Only for white women and other women to turn around and get all these lip injections. And it looks horrible because it's not natural, but y'all not here for that. So Erica checks in with Crystal because she feels like she's being ganged up on, which I don't know if Crystal is ganged up on as much as it is that Sun has decided that she doesn't like Crystal. So she's making a beeline for her. Um, Garcelle chunks it up to sudden being stressed, which I like Garcelle. Garcelle's one of my, I don't want to say, well, she's one of my favorite. Her and Crystal are my favorites of this franchise, but I feel that Garcelle explains away too much bullshit, if you know what I mean. Sudden mistreating her because she's stressed is not an excuse. Everyone is stressed. You want to see stress? Try being black in America. That is stressful, okay? Try being a black woman in America. That is stressful. So this excuse that she's mistreating Crystal because she's stressed, I wish Garcelle that you would have Crystal's back and stand in the gap for her just like Crystal did for you when she was talking to Kyle and Sutton. So next, the ladies decide to do their own thing. I think that Rena decides to do yoga and Garcelle and Crystal will go out and have latte. So Sutton is in her room still. Um, she's not asleep, but she's holding herself up in her room because she's an attention swore and she wants attention. And I believe, um, I think Kyle goes up there, maybe Rena. I could have this scene wrong, y'all, my apologies. And they basically ask her why she's not coming down and she's angry. She's angry that they did not include her on the joke. And this may be why I don't watch the other franchises because I feel like they argue about stupid stuff. Like there are so many real world issues occurring and you all are arguing about who didn't let you in on a joke. So I did have a subscriber shout out to you. I don't remember your name, my apologies, that told me that this franchise has a history of ganging up on one person. And so maybe that's why I sudden freaked out. But you know what y'all, if you a bad bitch, you ain't never worried about being ganged up on. One thing I'm not worried about being ganged up on because I cuss everybody out as my friends. And as my friends, I, I've had a, I've had the joke is on me moment and I went around the table and the joke was on them. If you think you are going to gang up against moi, you better think again. So when you a bad bitch, you ain't got to worry about it and cry over it. I still just think that Sutton is pissed off at Crystal for checking her on her own bias and her own microaggressions. That's what I think, but I could be wrong. So we get to their outings. Garcelle and Crystal go for lattes and Crystal basically feels Garcelle in on the conversation she had with Sutton and Kyle and how Sutton basically was like, well, it's not about race. She's like, she was very dismissive of Garcelle's experience. And Crystal thinks that the origin of Sutton's contempt for her was that conversation you all, ding, 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 Crystal is right. All of these dramatics, sudden falling out and crying, it's because she didn't like Crystal telling her, like, listen, this is my experience as a woman of color. Um, I can't speak for Garcelle because black women are definitely treated differently, but I'm telling you what happens and what I've experienced. She could not accept how dare a woman, of, a woman of color stand up and have a voice. And that's why I, I'm, I'm steady wondering, the more I watch Beverly Hills, the more I wonder why so many of you love Sutton. Because Sutton doesn't fool me. She's a proper lady until it's time not to be. And I'm telling you now, I always have my good eye on those Southern ladies and Southern gentlemen, because usually they some Southern racist and it just is what it is. So Garcelle encourages Crystal to be herself, which of course, but how can you be when you have a maniac on the loose in the group, which is Sutton. And Kyle tells Sutton to apologize, which for me, you all, I'm a person where I want an apology to be natural. I don't want it to be forced. If you really feel like you want to apologize to me, then do it, but I'm not gonna force it. 
moving on next we get to them boating or yachting for the day and y'all the first part of this was really funny because you all know this gap with me with real housewives of beverly hills so when renna and dorit were talking they were like girl you know this could go good or this could go badly we just have to see and they did a flashback and showed all the times they had a bad time on a boat and then they showed all the good times you all when i saw lisa and renna dancing and uh, uh, Look at her tongue. It took me back to Nene when she was doing all this to Greg. I just, I really, I thought that was so hilarious. So I just love these women when they have a good time. Like, I know that drama has to be a part of it because we all love a little bit of drama and nonsense. But I love when they have a good time because when they let their hair down, honey, they act a fool. And I love it. Like, Rena had tied one on a little too tight. So, Throughout this episode, really throughout the past few episodes, we have seen Erica comment about her marriage. And the reason for this is because, of course, we find out at the end of the episode she filed for divorce. And so she's steady praising Tom. Tom is a great attorney. He gives it all he has. He has dedicated his life to the law. Girl, he didn't dedicate his life to stealing from folks. You ain't even got a lot like that, Erica. You know, but whatever. Bravo keeps inserting these parts. Normally, they would not have. But they keep doing it because she randomly or just suddenly filed for divorce. So we see Sutton on the boat. She's sitting there with her sunglasses on, y'all. <laughs> y'all, the white, the white fragility. Where, where is Ebony? Ebony K. Williams, where are you at? You were being summons, good sis. The white fragility. Sutton is sitting there. Her mouth is trembling. She's about to break down in tears everyone sees it and they're like oh here comes sudden she about to cry so they ask her i think erica's like are you okay like well, what's going on are you okay and she's like oh yeah i'm fine i'm fine erica why you, i'm not erica but son why do you lie like that you are not fine you were on the verge of tears i don't care if you had sunglasses on you were on the verge of tears so she wants to speak to crystal for the umpteenth time her and Crystal go inside the boat and Sun tells her she didn't like being called ridiculous, which that is ridiculous. You all like, can't nobody call you a name? Like the name of the game is shade and you don't know how to come back and sting Crystal with a little bit of shade, a little bit of lighthearted shade. Like saying you're ridiculous is not the worst thing that has ever happened in life. So Crystal is an ice queen and I loved it. Like Crystal was sitting the whole time with that Louis Vuitton scarf. You better, Crystal, Crystal, you better go off. She sat there literally the whole time like this. Crystal didn't give not one damn and neither did I, Crystal. Like I'm, when, I'm telling, when I'm telling you all that Crystal is becoming one of my favorites, this is why. Don't nobody got time for the BS. So Krista says to son, like, you know, you act like you're in mania, right? I don't have time for you act as if you're crazy. It's sudden didn't like that, but you all, let's have the conversation. Sudden has been acting off her rocker. Sudden did not like being told that, but it was the truth. She's acting off her rocker. You're crying, you're, you're acting a fool, you're going off on me. Honey, I don't have time to deal with crazy folk, right? That's what your therapist, that's what a psychologist is for, that's what a psychiatrist is for. I'm not any of those people. Go see them, not me. You don't have the right to take off, take your issues and unload them on me. So Sutton says that she's very a very difficult to know person because she's very shy. Girl, bye. I'm shy. I, well, I should say I used to be shy. After a certain age, when you're placed in certain positions where you always have to speak or be in front of this or that, you it kind of goes away. It never leaves you. I'm still very shy at heart. But when it's time, when, when the lights come on and they pass contrary to Mike, I'm going to tear it up. Because one thing I'm going to do is make sure uh, I get the job done. I'm never going to do half-ass or be half-ass. So that whole excuse that she's shy, first it's your house. You moved out your dream house. Now it's that you're shy and that you don't trust people. Girl, bye. And let me tell you something. Crystal didn't lie not one bit. You act crazy. 
and I ain't got time for it. And Sutton sat there again on the verge of tears, rolling her under eyes. Girl, let me take a pen. Doing all this, what the hell does that mean? I'm trying not to cry. I don't have time for that Karen BS. You're not going to get me to feel sorry for you. You are a rich white woman in America. You are on the top of the totem pole. Not the very top, but you on top. I don't have time. Like there are people who can't even afford to move. There are people who want to move and literally they don't have the money. You're complaining and crying about moving from an old school dream house, renting a house for what is it? $4,000 a month, if not more. I, I could be off, if not more. Wow, you have purchased a home and you're waiting for them to finish remodeling. Like that is literally white privilege problems. And Crystal was not here for it. Um, I think Sun apologized and Crystal said, I'm glad we can move on. She didn't even say, I accept the apology. Yes, Miss Crystal, hold Sun to the fire. Next, <laughs> they are having dinner at the house. It is the last night they will be there. And thank God, because Lake Tahoe looks beautiful. I've never been. I wanna go now, I wanna rent a cabin and go. I don't know if I can afford their cabin, but I want to rent a cabin and go. Um, and once again, Garcelle and Renna are on time. <laughs> like, you all, Garcelle is like, again? Like, again? We're, we're at home. We're at our rental. You're telling me no one can be on time. And no, Garcelle, no one can be on time. So they, everyone comes down after a while, and she goes around. Garcelle goes around and asks everyone, who's had a nose job? That was rude, right? Listen, the answer is all of them. Erica done had her face snatched to where she talks like this. My name is Erica Jane. My husband is an attorney and uh, we live a very good life. I love Tom, he's the best. Her mouth, her face doesn't even move. I promise you, Erica's face don't move. Lisa Runner, you can tell she's had more Botox than a little bit in them ugly ass lips. I don't know about Dorit. I think they had come to an agreement that Dorit had a nose job, but it looks good. Dorit looks good. I, I'm not going to add nothing to it. I'm not going to take nothing from it. Dorit looks good. And at first, I actually wrote in my notes, Garcelle, you have. But then I went back and I actually looked at younger pictures of her and compared them to current pictures of her. Garcelle has not had a nose job. I was actually surprised because I thought she did and she has not. Um, Crystal is not coming to dinner. She doesn't want to deal with Sun. She's tired of her. And honestly, I think, I think Crystal is worn out from the cameras and filming with women that aren't her friends. But we'll get that later. We'll get to that later. So they're sitting around the dinner table, and Sun apologizes to the table for acting strange the night before, and she attributes her strangeness to her moving out of her dream house once again. That is not an issue, and I get it. I know some of you are gonna come in here and be like, girl, that's a stress, which it is. I have cried. <laughs> I have cried over material items before you all. I was getting new furniture um, right after I graduated from law school, right around the time I started dating Mr. Contrary. And there was this table I had. I had purchased it from Value City Furniture. You know, I was a broke law student. And I was getting rid of it because it was broke down. Like, Value City Furniture don't hold up. <laughs> You, it, it gave me three good long years and that's it. And I literally was holding the table and crying. And David was like, listen, I get it. This table represents hard work. It represents tenacity. It represents diligence. But you're about to get something much better. And literally, he had to convince me to let go of the table because that's what it represented to me. And I couldn't believe I was giving it up. I understand. I get sudden, but at the same time, I didn't mistreat anyone because I was throwing away old furniture, right? Or I was selling old furniture. And she doesn't get to mistreat people because she's moving from her dream house into a rental that's thousands of dollars a month and she's having her house worked on. Girl, bye. That, bye. Nene Leaks hand. Bye. 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 We bring back the Nene Leaks hand in 2021. Bye bye. We ain't got time for that bullshit. So they're at the table. And Lisa Renna, the commercials made it seem like Garcelle brought this conversation up. And I'm so glad she did. Lisa Renna sits her fake ass there and says, you know, last year was so rough for me. I was titled as the worst friend. Because you are. 
Because you are a renter, you're full of shit. I just, I don't know why we brought this up, but here we are. So she's bringing up her, her friendship or her former friendship with Denise Richards. And Rena goes on to tell a story that would support why she wasn't loyal to her. So this is a trigger warning. I'm not going to say the word, but the story has to do with the R word. It has to do with assault. So fast forward, please, if you are triggered, because my, my goal is to not trigger you. I, I've been triggered before. It's not fun. It is not something you want to go through. So please skip this. So Rena brings up the story about her and her husband, not her and her husband, child. <laughs> Her husband, Harry Hamlin, and one of his friends went out to a bar. They got drunk. I, she didn't say that, but I'm just feeling thin. They got drunk. Harry went home. His friend went home with a woman. He ended up the R word, right? Long story short, his friend was arrested, convicted, and he was in jail. And their group of friends was like, we have to go visit him. And Harry Hamlin was like, nah, I'm not visiting him. He did something wrong. Honey, when I tell you Dorit and Garcelle read my mind, like, why are we bringing up this story? What about the woman who was the victim in this story? Do you think she really wanted to turn on Beverly Hills Housewives and watch a story being told by a third party? Really not a third party, a fourth party. I just, Rena, you don't have any class. You are so low brown and low class. But her purpose of that story was to say, that she's not blindly loyal to anyone. And while I understand that and technically agree with that, if Denise is your friend, hell, let's go ahead and say it because I didn't review the last season. Denise absolutely slept with Brandy, period. I don't know why Denise was lying about it. I don't know why she was trying to cover it up. But baby, her and Brandy had a thing going on. And I think that Rena knew that because she said her and Denise have shared secrets before. And there are some secrets she will go to the grave with. However, Rena, as Garcelle said, why did you lead the charge against her? Why didn't you sit this one out? And Gar uh, not Garcelle, but um, Rena said, well, you're right and I was wrong. I should have. Well, woulda, shoulda, coulda, and y'all ain't friends no more, boo. So you can uh, kick that one right to the curb. For all of you younger people, right? And even me, because I didn't know Denise Richards that well. Denise Richard was an A-list celebrity. So for her even to come on Bravo, it's a big deal. It would be as if, I, I don't want to call, I don't want to compare Denise to Beyonce, but that type of level of fame, if you get what I'm saying, very popular, very well liked. It would be like if Beyonce went on a Real Housewife show. You're like, why are you here? Oh, I'm doing my friend Andy a favor, right? And only for that favor to be blown up in my face, right? That's kind of what it is. I wouldn't exactly compare them, but Denise Richards was huge. Huge. There are several celebrities now that we don't hear from that were huge back in the day. Bobby Brown was one. Bobby Brown was the man back in the day, but well, that's another topic for another day. Um, I agreed with Garcelle and Dorit. That story wasn't to be so to be told at the table. I don't get why she brought it up. You don't have to be blindly loyal, but for you to lead the charge against your friend, what I would have done is had a conversation off camera with Denise. Girl, I know you're sleeping with Brandy. What do you want me to do? If you want me to say that, I'll fall back. But if they ask me, I'm going to say I don't have a comment. I'm not going to elaborate either way. I'm not going to lie for you, but I'm not going to throw you up under the bus. And for some reason, that conversation did not happen. Moving on. So after dinner, the women decide to chill out. Rena decides to get in the pool. And honey, Rena is Garcelle. No one wants to join drunk ass Rena, right? So <laughs> Garcelle was like, girl, I have velvet on. <laughs> girl, I have velvet on. Where do you think I'm going? I'm not getting into the pool with my fine velvet. I'm not doing that. So Sutton decides to join her and they decide to, you know, do a little synchronized swimming. This part was really funny to me because growing up, my mother used to always call me the black Esther Williams. She'd be like, girl, my daughter thinks she is Esther Williams. You had to keep an eye on her. She would go swim in the middle of the ocean with sharks if she could. Like, you have to keep an eye on Donnie. She will swim until her heart's content, which I love to swim. Love to swim. If you all are looking to lose weight, one of the best exercises is swimming. 
I absolutely love it. Fun fact, my husband and one of my best friends can outswim me. And that's a that's a difficult feat, right? I didn't realize that until I went to we went to uh, compete against each other real quick in a pool a few years ago, and baby, they smoked my ass. So no, I am not Esther Williams, but it was funny because I knew who they were talking about because my mom used to always say I was the black Esther Williams. Next, we see Crystal tiptoeing around, you know, in the back, and like Erica kind of calls her over and she tells Erica, you know, that she just wanted to come say good night. Um, and that she felt really overwhelmed. Crystal ends up sitting down with Kyle, which I don't know why anyone would sit down with Kyle. She's not a very understanding person unless she likes you. And so Crystal tells Kyle that Sutton walked in on her and she was naked. Now, you all tell me if I'm wrong. From what I saw last week, I remember Sutton knocking on the door and she slowly opened it. I never heard from either Crystal nor Sutton that Crystal acknowledged her and told her she could come in. A lot of you all have that habit bad. And I'm telling you what I've experienced even in my professional life. I would have my office door closed and people will walk in, not even knock. I've had people knock while they're opening the door. No, that is not proper etiquette. You're supposed to knock and wait for someone to acknowledge you and give you permission to come in and then you open the door and come in. You don't knock and open. So rude and so low brow and a lot of you don't know that. I'm telling you what I've experienced. So Crystal says she didn't talk to her on the boat about her coming in and making the comment like, ooh, what are you doing? Honey, I'm in my I'm, I'm in my room. I'm in my Airbnb room. I'm naked because I'm getting ready to go to bed. That's what I'm doing. I ain't doing nothing bad. And if I was, you should have brought your ass up in here unannounced. That's what you shouldn't have done, son. son. You're a proper Southern lady, but you don't know to knock and wait until you're acknowledged. Kyle says that, you know, she didn't get why Crystal didn't tell the rest of the group if she was feeling that way because she didn't have to motherfucking too. I'm so sick of you, Kyle, thinking that you were the authority. What were you going to do besides that's all you were going to do, Kyle. So shut your ass up. I'm so, I, I, Kyle is not my favorite, as you can see. So Crystal says she didn't decide to discuss it and she didn't want to come to dinner because she didn't want another crazy night. I think at this point, Sutton is overwhelmed. I'm filming a TV show. There are cameras. I have this maniac that's on the loose. We're not friends. It's not a friend group. We're getting to know each other and this woman is constantly coming for me every time I blink. And so she didn't talk to Sutton, she didn't come to dinner and I say I don't blame her. You have to do what gives you a peace of mind and I'm not mad at Crystal for doing that. Moving on. Next we get to their last morning. Everyone's packed up. They're waiting on each other to finish. And baby, I could make this shit up if someone told me to. Sutton goes to talk to Crystal E motherfucking again. So Sutton comes in. Crystal tells her, the other night you came in unannounced. I was naked. You made me feel uh, 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 uncomfortable. It was creepy and it was weird, which it is. Why are you coming in my, I, I, I keep wanting to say my hotel room. You know what I mean? Why do you keep coming into my room unannounced and then you're saying, ooh, what are you doing here? Baby, get ready for bed. If you don't want to see my naked behind, you shouldn't come up in here. I didn't ask you to come up in here. You did. You could have left my coat on the couch. No one was going to take it, son. So Crystal begins to cry. And at this point, I get it. And because I like Crystal, I'm going to be biased and I'm going to let it slide. But honestly, Andy Bravo, y'all need to get Beverly Hills their own brand of tissue. Because all them heifers do is cry about every goddamn thing. I just... I just don't get it. So Sutton apologizes and they hug it out. I don't know if this will be the end of the Crystal and Sutton saga, but honey, I don't want to see not one more conversation between Crystal and Sutton. Moving on. Last but certainly not least, we reach election day. It is Tuesday, 2020. And as we all know, we didn't get any results on Tuesday night. None on Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, but we got them on Saturday morning. And the results, was, of course, was that Joseph Biden and Kamala Harris won the presidency. I'll never forget it. I was actually in a meeting. And I remember all of my sisters on the meeting going off like, and all that type of stuff. 
So, um, you know, a, a heavy weight was lifted from a lot of people. If it wasn't lifted from you, okay, cool beans, I don't care. <laughs> I know that's rude, but I always have a black Republican come in my comments and I'm like, girl, I don't care. I really don't. Like, you cannot convince me that Trump was a good person. You cannot. But anyways, it's election day. And Crystal, Dorit, and Renna, I believe it was just those three. Erica sends a text that's like, hey ladies, <laughs> long story short, I filed for divorce this morning and I just wanted to let you all know, please just basically keep me in your good thoughts and prayers. And everyone is confused because they were just in Lake Tahoe and she was just bragging about Tom Biden Morton's every night. He's a good lawyer. He's a good man. Tom and I are great. And you're filing for divorce. Seems interesting. So we will see how this plays out in the next episodes or the next upcoming episodes. But I, I feel like Renna said it best. Like y'all had 22 years together, but this is so Erica. I don't know Erica well because <laughs> I've had a gap in knowledge. I don't even remember. I didn't watch when she first came on the show. I thought she was a pop artist that liked to do hip pop. Um, I don't know. It seems like she's cleaned it up since then because you know they love to do that they love to culturally appropriate and they love to go and make a good cleanup job but anyways um of course erica is an ice queen and i in a good way i, I told y'all she seems very very calculating the jury is still out no pun intended <laughs> oh miss erica jane so you guys drop down in the comment and let me know your thoughts on this episode my dog is trying to get in my lap come on come on She's trying to get in my lap. I'm trying to hold her back. So you guys let me know what you all thought of this episode. Um, and if there's nothing else, I will see you all later. Mwah. Say bye-bye, Isis. Say bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Look, look, look. Say bye. No, no. No licky. Uh-uh. Say bye. You don't want to say, oh!